Hello and welcome to the Seaweed Sofa, where we sit down with some of the most interesting participants at this year's World Water Week to learn more about the array of water-related issues being discussed this week in Stockholm. My name is Eric Paglia, host of the Seaweed Sofa, which is now streaming live on the Seaweed Media Hub. And the name of this uh, first session of uh, Wednesday morning is Pharmaceuticals in the Aquatic Environment in the Baltic Sea Region, which is the title of a new publication being launched by UNESCO and Helcom. And joining me back here on the Seaweed Sofa once again, welcome back, uh, two guests that we had on yesterday's uh, sofa on uh, microplastics. We have uh, Dr. Sarantuya Zandar Zandaraya, the uh, Program Specialist for Water Quality at the International Hydrological Program of UNESCO. And she also coordinates the International Initiative on Water Quality at UNESCO. We're also joined by Dr. Ulfa Majub, uh, National Research Institute for Rural Engineering Water and Forestry in Tunisia. So welcome back to both of you. Nice to see you again. Um, so starting to you, perhaps uh, you can start by uh, telling us about this uh, new UNESCO publication on uh, pharmaceuticals in the Baltic Sea region. Good morning, thank you. Well, UNESCO and the Health Commission Commission um, has uh, just published a new publication called Pharmaceuticals in the Aquatic Environment of the Baltic Sea. And this is a very um, uh, interesting publication being the first ever comprehensive regional assessment on of, of the pharmaceuticals presence in the aquatic environment in the Baltic Sea region. And this is also first of its kind being um, a report which collects data through national reporting, which means that the countries provide uh, data for um, this uh, publication. Uh, this publication uh, is a comprehensive because it includes data on the occurrence of pharmaceuticals in the different compartments of the aquatic environment, which uh, are the uh, river waters, as well as wastewater influence and effluence, and in the uh, marine environment, so that we can see what is the impact of wastewater containing pharmaceutical residues on the marine environment. So it really uh, links uh, the uh, land-based activities with um, uh, the ecosystems in the marine uh, environment uh, to see the impact of human activities beyond our uh, territories where the activities are taking place. So it is also uh, gives a bigger picture of water quality issues from the reach to reef. So um, in this regard, this report is very pioneering and it, it is the first one containing uh, national uh, comprehensive uh, data at the regional scale and such uh, data on emerging pollutants and pharmaceuticals for the moment doesn't exist except our publication jointly done by UNESCO and Health Convention. Convention. So this report is the result of the UNESCO case study on the same topic conducted uh, together with uh, the Health Convention, and it is conducted under the UNESCO project called Emerging Pollutants in Water and Wastewater. The Baltic Sea is surrounded by quite a few uh, large cities and uh, large populations. Um, which uh, countries are included in this report? So the um, Baltic Sea countries um, um, which have provided data to this report are six countries, Denmark, Finland, Estonia, Germany, Poland, and Sweden. And um, uh, of two, three other countries, they have not provided data, but I think it's a very good start to, uh, to have uh, the national reporting on the data of pharmaceuticals at the regional level. Do you plan on expanding this to try to cover some of these other countries that are not included uh, yet, or? The, we, um, uh, we, are ex we will f do some follow-up activities with the HELCOM Convention, and actually our uh, uh, report has resulted in a follow-up action by the HELCOM Convention that they have taken decision at their last um, delegations meeting to uh, launch um, uh, another project on pharmaceuticals in the Baltic Sea region and also to expand the data collection and assessment activities. So uh, I'm quite uh, hopeful that other countries will join this reporting uh, initiative. And uh, Ulfa, um, how is the uh, occurrence of pharmaceutical res uh, residues and water resources relevant uh, for your country, Tunisia? Um, thank you, Eric. Well, uh, to say if it's relevant to a country, we should have evidence. Uh, 
you know. So we find evidence through the publication that has been uh, published. They are available as a scientific peer-reviewed paper, for example. And the upcoming report that was elaborated within this project is a proof also that there are pharmaceuticals in the water resources. Actually, we have found uh, six out of nine antibiotics in treated wastewater, and we have found three antibiotics in groundwater. This shows that the impact of irrigation with treated wastewater on the groundwater first. Uh, secondly, we should take into account the consumption of pharmaceuticals in developing countries, not only in Tunisia. For example, for antibiotics, the, the consumption has increased by about 40% between 2005 and 2013, which shows that, well, we can figure out what kind, the amount of pharmaceutical that can be released in the wastewater. And also we should pay attention to the consumptions. In many developing countries, um, pharmaceutical has become available. In Tunisia, for example, we can buy antibiotics without prescription. And self-medication is another factor. In Tunisia, about 60% of the population is practicing self-medication. This adds uh, the load of pharmaceuticals and the pressure to the environment. And the second thing, another thing is related to the treatment plants. You know that the pharmaceuticals go through the wastewater and they are released by the treatment plant. Our treatment plants in Tunisia, they are uh, producing secondary treated effluent. And with this kind of tre treatment, the pharmaceutical cannot be eliminated. So we have a lot of pharmaceuticals, especially the more persistent or the more soluble that can be found in the effluent, in the treated effluent. And by the way, yes, these pharmaceuticals found their ways in the, in the surface water and in the groundwater. So yes, these are relevant and we need more proofs on their concentration in the different compartments of the environment. Mm. Okay, and Sarah and Tia, according to this uh, new uh, UNESCO report, um, how many pharmaceuticals did you find in the freshwater and marine environments in the Baltic Sea region? And which are the most frequently found in water and in the higher concentrations? So the data contained in our report um, uh, include over 45,000 data points, including uh, pharmaceuticals detected in uh, river waters, wastewater, and marine water, seawater. Um, we have um, uh, data of the occurrence of over 160 pharmaceuticals in the freshwater and um, wastewater, and about 150 in marine water. So this really shows that how many different types of pharmaceuticals are found in our aquatic environment, and they can also have um, impact on aquatic ecosystems. And may, we also may find them in, uh, back in our drinking waters because drinking water purification plants are not fully effective in removing these um, pollutants. Uh, the main uh, pharmaceutical groups that are frequently or mo most commonly, commonly found in uh, uh, wastewater and in uh, fresh water are the uh, anti-inflammatory, and analgesic uh, type uh, drugs, as well as cardiovascular and central nervous system agents and antibiotics. So, and these uh, kind of um, antibiotics are used both uh, uh, for human, um, as human pharmaceuticals, as well as in veterinary um, uh, practices. So they have origins from um, domestic wastewater as well as from agricultural activities. And were these findings surprising? Were you expecting to find so much pharmaceuticals in, in yes, water? Yes, we were surprised. Yeah, but and also concerned. We are much more concerned. Mm -hmm. And what are the main uh, sources of pharmaceuticals entering freshwater water environments? Um, are uh, wastewater treatment plants capable of removing pharmaceuticals from, yeah. from wastewater? So according to the data um, uh, submitted for this uh, report, um, it appears that the main uh, sources of pharmaceuticals in the aquatic environment are the domestic wastewater, which means that pharmaceuticals which we use, they, um, uh, the residues, they end up in uh, domestic wastewater, 
And um, the wastewater treatment plants, as I said earlier, they are not fully effective in removing uh, these pollutants. For example, the data provided in our report have shown that um, out of 118 pharmaceuticals assessed in the wastewater treatment plants, only nine were removed with an efficiency over 90 percent, which means that the um, uh, wastewater treatment plants were effective in removing only certain pharmaceuticals. About half of these uh, 118 pharmaceuticals were removed with an efficiency less than 50 percent, which means, which also shows that wastewater treatment plants are not effective um, in removing most of these pollutants and they are not effective in removing at all also other half of these pollu uh, pharmaceutical pollutants. And uh, this data is um, relevant to wastewater treatment plants in developed countries, which, are, um, which have secondary and in some countries tertiary level treatment, which means that quite high level of uh, treatment. But uh, the situation in developing countries is, is much different and wastewater treatment plants are not as effective as in developed countries, which means that the wastewater treatment plants in developing countries will not remove uh, these uh, pharmaceutical pollutants. And this UNESCO report contains a wealth of data and information, but are there any, other, any gaps that are not included in this report that still need to be addressed? Well, uh, this report is indeed um, the first um, uh, wealth of uh, data on pharmaceuticals presence in um, aquatic environments, but we also have identified that there are data gaps. And so these include uh, d uh, the um, uh, data on the concentrations of these um, uh, pharmaceuticals in wastewater, river water, as well as in the marine environment, because uh, they are not routinely monitored. So the monitoring data which co are contained in our report uh, include uh, um, uh, data produced by research or by voluntary monitoring. So we need to have more data to have more information on the concentrations. Uh, we uh, also in our report tried to collect data on the production and sales of pharmaceuticals. We do have some data on it, but this is an area also we need to have more data. We don't have any data on other sources of um, pharmaceuticals that uh, they enter into aquatic environment. For we have uh, collected data on pharmaceuticals in domestic wastewater, but we do not have any data on pharmaceuticals in agricultural runoff or other sources such as the solid waste management, the solid waste littering into fresh water, surface waters and coastal waters. We also do not have um, data on uh, the removal efficiencies of different um, wastewater treatment processes and also on uh, the uh, 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 human health and ecosystem impacts of different pharmaceuticals. So yes, there is data gap, but we have done a very uh, good first step to collect uh, um, data which are at least essential to have a, a picture of the situation. And we touched upon this a little bit before, Elfa, you mentioned about some data from Tunisia, but uh, generally, how good is the data and information availability in developing countries? Uh, well, the data in, well, sometimes the data are not available in developing country because, especially on consumption, for example, the data are not, we do not have a kind of open access to this data about pharmaceuticals. And uh, also when we need to publish the data, well, sometimes it's a bit critical to show that to the public. So we have to, have, we have to be sure and to have uh, some kind of evidence. We have to prove that these uh, pharmaceuticals are, uh, their occurrence is, um, well, they are occurring uh, somehow frequently in some compartment well, to, um, to, give, uh, to be sure that they can be um, recognized as pollutant for some kind of, um, some kind of uh, compartment in the environment. And the second thing is about the um, availability of the publications also. Uh, publications are not available because producing um, 
publication needs a lot of efforts. It needs a strategy for monitoring, it needs a lot of analytical capacities and human capacities, and all these are uh, means to produce data about pharmaceuticals. So these are, uh, I mean, this is a great effort to, to, to do to produce data in Tunisia and in developing country as a whole. Would you like to add to that, Sanjaya? Um, data gap is um, a very uh, serious issue in developing countries because um, uh, the research and monitoring efforts are, um, uh, they don't exist in developing countries or they don't have capacity, human or technical capacity to collect the research data or to do, to conduct the research or to do monitoring. So um, the uh, uh, report on in the, the Baltic Sea region uh, is an example where we can see that the data gap is not only a serious issue in developing countries, it's also in developed countries, but we will have to make more efforts to fill the data gap in developing countries by um, uh, conducting a similar effort, um, taking um, uh, initiatives to um, improve human capacities for monitoring, also to promote scientific collaboration between developed and developing countries so that the countries can uh, have scientific capacity to do research and to produce uh, scientific information and data that are necessary in developing countries. What about public awareness of this problem of uh, pharmaceuticals? Uh, do people are ge do they generally know about this and do they, do they react to this somehow? Um, uh, well, pharmaceuticals as a water pollutant has uh, been um, uh, recently an issue of interest in the media. I have seen uh, several of, um, uh, articles uh, addressed to the general public and it's good news and this informs the general public and also helps uh, raising awareness. UNESCO is also doing efforts to raise awareness for the general public as well as for decision makers, water professionals. But in general, um, uh, awareness is still uh, limited. People now, I think, to a certain extent are aware that pharmaceuticals that we use end up in, in the uh, environment but they are not fully aware of the human health risks or ecosystem risks that these pharmaceuticals may present or pose. They are not also fully aware of um, how these um, human health threats or ecosystem risks can be prevented by just changing human behavior. For example, as Alpha said earlier, in developing countries maybe uh, the doctors from uh, from uh, pharmacists may uh, shift from uh, selling uh, pharmaceuticals without any prescription to uh, prescription of, um, uh, and also reducing um, the self medication, uh, raising awareness on uh, the um, importance of not overusing. Pharmaceuticals. Sometimes I think people tend to use too uh, much pharmaceuticals, which are not really necessary also to our human health. I mean, uh, this report has some pretty alarming conclusions from what I gather here. Um, will the data and recommendations presented by the report um, be used by country, uh, the countries around the Baltic uh, for decision making and policy development? Yes, we are very happy with the f uh, outcome and the result of our report. Um, uh, this report is being conducted in collaboration uh, with the HealthCom Convention has uh, uh, an opportunity to be uh, integrated into the national decision making because HealthCom con uh, con uh, Convention countries are um, the main contributors to this report so they are interested and willing to take follow-up action uh, based on the data and information contained in this report. And also this report has been um, uh, a follow-up to the 2010 and 2013 HealthCom ministerial declarations, uh, which uh, also uh, aimed to um, uh, assess the presence of pharmaceuticals in the aquatic environment in the Baltic Sea region. So uh, there will be a follow-up and the uh, uh, Baltic Sea countries are um, interested in uh, continuing this initiative. But on the UNESCO side, we are also 
um, uh, uh, doing similar of, um, initiatives in other regions. And this is one of the 16 case studies that UNESCO has conducted. We have other case studies in other parts of the world, and um, they uh, focus different aspects of emerging pollutants and different pollutants, not only pharmaceuticals, because pharmaceuticals uh, represent only one group of emerging pollutants. And um, uh, this uh, will be a part of the global UNESCO support on uh, of, uh, improving the capacity of member states, countries to address this uh, uh, issue of growing concern. And Olfa, do you think uh, the research on pharmaceuticals will influence deci decision making in Tunisia? Um, well, I would say that there is nothing more convincing than proofs. So decision makers, they decide on what they have. They do have, they need data to decide on which alternative is better. So the role of scientists there is to provide tools is to provide data, is to provide information, to provide strategies for monitoring and research program. And all this would uh, provide data and provide evidence to the decision makers. Uh, because decision makers, they can provide uh, guidelines, they can provide enforced regulation. So our role here is to, uh, to give tools to the decision makers because we should understand that we have different way of thinking, and decision maker cannot decide on what they do not have. So we have to prove them that pharmaceuticals are relevant by showing that we have found some concentration in um, a certain concentration in wastewater, for example, in uh, surface water or in groundwater, and try to um, to gather this scattered information to make them a kind of uh, hub on which the, the decision makers can base their decision to take, well, which one is the better, and if we can go for uh, a regulation or not, if we can go for enforcement or regulation or not. So the decision makers should, um, should be uh, supported by the scientists in this, um, in this task. And so, Andrea, do you see this uh, problem of um, pharmaceutical pollution in um, aquatic environments becoming more serious in the future? Um, indeed, I think it will become more serious for several reasons. First, uh, the uh, population growth. So as the population grows, the uh, use of pharmaceuticals will increase, which means that we will have um, also increasing quantities of pharmaceuticals in the aquatic environment. Uh, secondly, the, in certain parts of the world, especially in developed countries, the population aging is a problem. So, which uh, you, uh, in general, with the population aging, the use of pharmaceuticals also increase. And that will also be another reason of uh, increased quantities of uh, pharmaceuticals entering into the aqu aquatic environment. On the other hand, the capacities of um, uh, wastewater treatment plants of removing these uh, pollutants before they enter into fresh water uh, or coastal waters. And um, the progress in improving wastewater treatment plants, especially in developing country regions, is not as fast uh, as uh, it would catch up with the population growth. The situation is already uh, quite critical now. Uh, in some developing countries, up to 80% of wastewater produced is discharged without any treatment or with limited treatment. So the problem is uh, uh, serious now and it, uh, it will become serious in the future. If we, um, if we look at the, these two sessions we've had together in the last couple of days and these two reports, these two UNESCO reports, the first on microplastics, which we discussed yesterday and now pharmaceuticals, are these, um, are these two pressures on water uh, quality, are they something that should be addressed together or are they two completely separate issues that have two different sets of solutions? Um, they uh, require approach um, of, uh, it, uh, in, uh, in one sense that they require different approaches being different kind of uh, pollutants, but the ways of dealing 
or controlling or reducing these pollutants before they enter into wastewater or freshwater would not be different because uh, they require um, uh, approaches that we reduce our human he uh, health impact. So the um, uh, solutions will be uh, the same. It needs to be in the uh, addressed in a holistic way as reducing pollutants load into the uh, freshwater uh, resources. But how to um, approach these pollutants at what stages of uh, the life cycle production and consumption of these different pollutants will require different uh, approaches. And uh, for example, for microplastics, it's much more uh, packaging and um, uh, cosmetics or household of uh, plastics use. While for pharmaceuticals, we also need to, to take into account uh, the uh, hospitals or the edu educate doctors or uh, pharmacists, we uh, may uh, have some approach to reduce the use of uh, uh, antibiotics uh, or other pharmaceuticals in the agricultural activities because animal husbandry is another main uh, user of pharmaceuticals and another main source of pharmaceuticals into environment. So uh, the um, target groups and approach will be different, but I think solutions will need to be holistic and it needs to be addressed uh, uh, together also not only these, uh, uh, with these two types of pollutants but uh, with other types of the pollutants so that the w we have less impact on our uh, limited and precious water resources. Very good. Well, we very much appreciate you um, providing us this, with this information about what's going on here in the Baltic Sea region and the water quality that, uh, that uh, those of us live here in Sweden are consuming and uh, thank you very much for sharing the results of this uh, very interesting new report and thank you both for being here on the CB sofa this morning. Yeah, thank you and this report uh, is available on UNESCO website for downloading so I invite uh, um, the audience to go to UNESCO website of the International Hydrological Program and to have access to the data. Very good. Pharmaceuticals in the aquatic environment in the Baltic Sea region, a status report. Yes. Name of this report. Yes. Thank, Thank you again you. for joining us here today. Thank you. And thanks for tuning in to the CB Sofa. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the World Water Week.